Disney News Review Time, taking a look at some of the biggest stories from across the Walt Disney Company over the past week. And we start with the unfortunate news that prices have once again gone up. Across the board, we are watching, as the LA Times reports, the prices are rising again at Disneyland and neighboring California Adventure Park by as much as 9% for single-day tickets and 11% for preferred parking. The Anaheim Resort has also increased prices up to 25% starting last Tuesday for the new Genie Plus service, which allows visitors to skip long lines on some of the most popular attractions. The price hikes come after... A year uh, after the theme park raised daily ticket prices up to 8% and increased daily parking rates by 20%. The increase also comes only two months after the resort raised prices for annual passes by as much as 16%. Halloween fans were already getting a taste of the steeper cost. Tickets to the Oogie Boogie Bash range from $129 to $179 this year, up from $114 to $169 last year. And a two-day ticket previously priced at $255 has increased to $285, a 12% rise. And preferred parking in the Mickey and Friends parking structure, the Pixar uh, Pals structure, and the Toy Story lot increased to $50 a day from $45. The price for standard parking in those locations remains $30. And the price is to uh, upload Genie Plus, a feature that can be added to the Disneyland phone app, has also increased to $25 from $20 when visitors make the purchase before arriving at the park. And park goers who buy the feature after arriving at the park will pay a price that varies based on the demand that day. Disneyland officials did not disclose the price range for buying Genie Plus at the park. And at Walt Disney World, a Genie Plus add-on will cost anywhere from $15 to $22, depending on how busy the parks are. You won't know the exact price of the add-on until the day of your visit, at which point you can check the My Disney Experience app and make the purchase. Prices for some individual lightning lanes excluded from Genie Plus will also increase depending on the day and the ride's popularity. For example, last year, lightning lane access to a single popular ride ranged from $7 to $20 depending on demand. Now, a single lightning lane pass can range from $10 to $22 for the month of October. Many of the character dining experiences, refillable mugs sold at resorts, and soft drink prices have all been reported to be on the rise as well out at Walt Disney World, in addition to many of the food items here at Disneyland. And Katrina, while this tr- uh, it does tend to happen about every year around this time, so it's not entirely a surprise the prices were going to go up, there does seem to be even more outrage, even more of a backlash at this point surrounding the news this time. What do you think that is and will it matter in the end everybody gets outraged every time the prices go up nothing really seems to change yeah i mean i think it hurts it hurts the pocket a little bit more this year just because of all of the inflation that we have to deal with in life like everything is going up but then on top of it disney does this one-two punch where it's like okay well ticket prices are going up also uh, Lightning Lane's going up, Genie Plus is going up, uh, hotel rates are outrageously expensive, uh, valet parking, whoop, up. They're raising the prices in the park for the food, and they're raising everything. So I think it's just, mo- it's more, it's happening so fast, you know? And then everybody's just outraged and pissed off, to be honest. And then, will it matter? No. Uh, Disney doesn't care. Uh, 100%. Not unless people actually do something and they see a huge difference so like if i mean people are still going to pay it that's the reason why they're increasing their prices if people actually stood up and said like nope we're not we're not going we're not going to do this and then they started seeing like a decrease of like attendance and like Mm -hmm. people actually like not going for like two weeks straight and then people like banding together being like we're not going to do this to show disney then maybe disney might listen in some in some way maybe shape or form but People, you know, complain about it, but then they're still going to do it. And so Disney's not going to, they're going to be like, well, you guys are are showing up. So why are we going to change it? You know, you guys can like cry all you want. You know, it's like the person who cried wolf, right? They keep crying it, but like no one's going to listen in a way, unless you actually like see the wolf. Yeah, we, (laughs) we, we we hear that all the time, right? (laughs) The, The whole idea of, hey, we're mad. We can't believe you raised prices again. And then the demand remains the same consistent and it's not that big of a deal to disney because uh supply and demand well we are gonna see our more angry customers Mm -hmm. like that's what we're gonna see in the end so people are gonna complain and complain and complain they're still gonna show up but now that they paid so much money they expect a huge return when they show up which they may not get 
and then who gets who gets that the cast members yep. the cast members get the lash out and then they're the ones that have to deal with it and then that's pretty much like the only change we're going to see is more and more angry people because they spent so much money for a trip now and on top of it like $22 for lightning lane on top of $22 for journey plus like mm -hmm. oh my god like that is so expensive just that's to a, ride one ride. Uh, you're absolutely right. That's an excellent point, too, is <laughs> that sense of entitlement has been going up year after year. Now, of course, we took a break because of the pandemic, and I think we're all just grateful Disney parks yeah. are open again, of course. But that sense of entitlement was already on the rise based on how those prices were skyrocketing. And I, I think you raise a fantastic point there of now individuals seem to think more and more, well, wait a minute. I paid more for this. I demand a better experience than I expected even before because now I'm paying extra. So where where is my X, Y, and Z? How come this person gets it and I don't? And that creates a very sort of tribal-like experience oh, yeah. among guests where more there's tribalism. More fights are going to happen. Yeah, and, and it becomes a who has versus who doesn't have. And um, unfortunately, that will only, I think, get stronger, uh, as yeah. you raise the point, when prices go up. Yeah. I mean, with Max Pass before, it was, yeah, Max like Max Pass back in the day, it was, you know, what, 5, 10, then it went to 15. And, and yeah, okay, that's fine. But it, we're all in the same playing field. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you, sh you have to show up to the park to actually do Max Pass to actually do it. And if I don't show up until noon, I'm not going to complain. Like, I got whatever was left over. Yeah, it's expensive, but... You know, we were able to like buy it as an annual pass to put on our ticket, and you could like so it wasn't that big of a deal. But um, but now it's just kind of like okay, you pay twenty five dollars for Genie Plus before you get to the park if you want, but then also when you get to the park, you still have to pay for like Lightning Lane. It just like adds. It's it's more of a like there was only one one thing you had to pay for, but now there's two things: Genie Plus and Lightning Lane if you really want to do it. So now it's just even more of a just just pff, right to the gut. <laughs> And that, that that premium parking price, you know, you don't have to park in the front row for 50 bucks. Sure. But still, parking is a discretionary expense that they up and up and up. Uh, yeah. And it drives me crazy because they own that property. You know, yeah, they're, they they're able it. to, you know, they, I think about the hotel parking situation, how radical it is that they charge the hotel guests who spend a fortune to get a room um, astronomical pricing to park their I car I mean, there. honestly, the most laughable one is the Grand Californian where you have to. So if you've never seen stayed at the Grand Californian before you have to park across the street yeah. if you want to self park take your luggage and go across the yeah, street go hoofing but it. if you don't have a key you have to ring the buzz bell to actually get through the gate and then so you have to wait and then they'll be like what's your name oh, okay and then they'll then they'll let you in through the gate it's it's such a joke like you're paying a thousand dollars a night and if you decide to self park, you have to self park across the street, walk across the street with your luggage. Then you have to ring a like a, a buzzer bell to get through instead of just having it right on property where you can just self park, go up the elevator and then check in and not have to worry about any of this. It is the most cumbersome it of is. all three <laughs> Disney hotels um, in terms of parking process. Like, Why didn't they sure. just make like some kind of bridge i mean they are gonna one day but like maybe in disney forward yeah, i know so. i would like they would they sh i like they should have made a bridge honestly during covid when like we did that one when they just reopened the hotel we stayed there and honestly it was the coolest thing because we actually got to park where valet parked wow underneath right, right and it was front. Yeah. so nice because mm -hmm. like the, the I mean, cleanest parking lot i've ever seen <laughs> parking lot i have ever seen in my life and that's the reason why it's valet but it's just it was so nice because i was like oh man i forgot water bottles in the car I was able to go on the elevator, go down, get the, and then go back up. But if I forgot it now, I'd be like, Tyler, do you want to do it? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, nope. I'll yeah. just buy one. <laughs> you, you spend the most for a property like that, and you get the most inconvenient possible parking oh, yeah. situation of all three hotels. Paradise Pier right out the back door yeah. in, in its own But they garage. don't have elevators, so you have to take your luggage. That's a good that, point. I yeah. hate it so much. There is no <laughs> elevators in that parking garage, so you go yeah, down don't the park stairs. on top. Good luck. Yeah. So you better drive your car down to load your luggage and the opposite <laughs> when you have to like take it all out too. So, But like Disneyland's the only one that's kind of like, okay, this is great parking, but they have tons of parking. They yeah. have the outside parking. They have a parking garage, and I know that they don't fill that parking garage. Not at all. Like, what? Yep. What? 
Yeah. That's what? ridiculous. What? Yeah. Lots of extra expenditures being thrown into the mix here, as well as sort of the inflated prices that we have watched and covered for you here in previous weeks on food and beverage at both the Disneyland Resort and the Walt Disney World Resort. Um, as mentioned in the story, character dining also going up, uh, and we're watching as you know, incrementally all of these things start to stack up together. It is now more expensive than ever uh, to visit a Disney park, and no doubt that expectation that entitlement uh, situation only grows when those sorts of things happen so unfortunate to see any time prices have to rise but uh, will it matter in the end perhaps we're just complaining for no reason once again welcome to this happy place welcome 